Hi there. Sorry. Hey there. Um, wow. Only two of us. I had the wrong link, so I'm wondering whether other for the meeting. I'm wondering whether other people did. Mm. I don't know. It. Uh, this is the second time. I think we can't join the link early either, so I panic every time I try to be here a few minutes early, and it says invalid. Oh, oh I didn't realize that. Oh, <laughs> and then okay. all of a sudden, it works just fine. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got we got folks joining. Yes. Hello there. It's just me. It's not just you. It was also Helen. Uh, meaning the folks who joined, the three of you were here already. So, uh -huh. aha. Well, Helen only beat you by a second. Ah, uh, gotcha. No, oh, hello. <laughs> Hi there. I like. I didn't like hit the okay you can record this button or whatever so it wouldn't let me come off mute like it won't let you participate if you don't acknowledge it's okay to record I think that's very cool feature very logical <laughs> very logical yes <laughs> awesome and thanks for um queuing up the uh in the meeting note section Helen appreciate that Oh yeah, my pleasure. I never really know kind of what to take out besides what, you know, if there's a speaker or something like that. So all of those notes are from like the very first <laughs> meeting we had uh, at Hyperledger. So if you need to take, obviously, you know, edit, edit as you will. <laughs> yes. I think it's still some, val there's still some valuable links there. Um, relating to how to find us and where you can find the most recent information and what links to use and all that kind of stuff to join so maybe I don't know, maybe keeping it in is helpful but whatever all right we'll just give people another minute trevor you're queued we we finished i believe it was page 23 if i recall correctly That's right um what do you want to work from do you want to work from the um which document do you want to work from? I would say whatever is easiest for you, to be honest. Okay. Your uh, dealer's choice. Uh, let's 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 do it from PowerPoint because it'd be easier for me to type notes into the final thing. Let me just do you, this up. Do you have a, a link you can share of the most recent version of the document? Sometimes oh. it's easier if I can scroll Follow around along. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, hang on. I believe we do. Give me a second. Mm, I have a PDF. Trevor, is that linkable? Uh, it's not, but let me, I, if you, if you give me two minutes, I can make a Google doc of it. The reason I don't do Google, Google do, the reason I don't do Google doc is that it, it just messes with the format and it's easier totally. to PDF from, um, I just flipped it to Steve directly also, but for anybody else, like moving okay. forward, maybe we can put it in our notes. Yeah, I was going to say anything oh, here. stuff shouldn't live in our own personal, <clears throat> pardon me, our own personal Google drives for this, everything should live on the wiki. Um, so if you can put upload, a, uh, upload the file directly there for people to see, um, that would be helpful. Okay, and if we're ready to get into our agenda, uh, we're still missing Sir Ken. I'm not sure if we were expecting him today, but we can go ahead and get through some of our housekeeping items as we get ourselves organized today. So welcome to the July 13th edition of the Cardia Working Group. We are um, a participant of Hyperledger Labs, which means that we're operating under the Hyperledger anti and Linux Foundation antitrust policy. And I will chat for you all our notes, which are on the wiki page in Hyperledger. Hopefully this link works. It's my edited one, but um, we are also operating under the Hyperledger code of conduct, which 
in short is encouraging everybody to have a voice here, to be nice to each other, to encourage participation and to uh, welcome anybody who wants to engage in our community. So with that said, I think we have all familiar faces. So I'm gonna skip introductions if that's okay. Feel free to pipe in and introduce yourself if you want to at any point. And we are resuming where we left off in our last session, specifically to talk about the white paper edits and uh, getting through that. We had finished on page 23 last time in our team effort in editing. And Trevor is going to lead us through the hopefully the end of the document so that we can get that white paper finalized and redistributed. Anything anybody wants to add? to the agenda. Is okay. that, did you just post uh, that link in the chat to the white paper? To I the, did uh, not. I posted okay, uh, that link was for the wiki meeting notes. Okay. Hold on, it's churning away. Um. Okay. Okay, there you go. Fantastic. Thank you, Trevor. I'll put that in the wiki page as well if anybody's following along there. And let's see. Let me share my let me share my screen. While you're getting ready, um, we did cover uh, in an offline discussion, Ken and I met as chairs to talk about lining up some additional agendas and trying to get some things booked out for some of our future meetings. So he and I have been making outreaches to the community um, that we believe would be really uh, helpful in terms of progressing the discussion around the work we're doing here at Cardia in a real world scenario. So we've had a bunch of guest speakers. We're looking for some additional in very specific business communities that might be useful to helping us understand uh, real world implementations. So we're hoping to get those slated for upcoming meetings and we'll try to keep the community updated on those as they get slated. Okay. okay, so let Gosh, me actually just go, enough time. <laughs> yeah, let me uh, let me go back to slide twenty two. Um, so, do we need this middle column of how necessary is that to explain what a schema is? I mean, it's just a little crowded, but would it be more confusing if if we didn't have this the, these icons indicating? what is actually written to the distributed ledger? I'm of the opinion that the right side is technical and the left side is might be a TLDR for some people too long, to, we don't read it. So the icons, um, that's the succinct list right there that might might be pretty good. Um, sorry, I'm, 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 which of these two, the distributed ledger network column or the actual schema data? Uh, uh, schema data? So the rightmost column is code that some yeah. people's eyes will just glaze over at. Mm -hmm. And the leftmost column is a lot of text. And so the, yeah. the middle column is a nice summary. Right. Okay. So, sh so everybody agreed that maybe getting rid of this? The code? Yeah. That's for a pretty narrow audience. I think uh, the specifics, if someone says, gosh, I really want to know about schemas from the middle mm -hmm. column, then uh, we could put, provide that in a different context for, a, yeah. for an overview. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's super important. 
maybe okay. we can maybe we can solve that by just adding one sentence to that first sentence in this page, which is that a schema is a JSON based document template. There you go. Uh, no, you have specification. You can take out document. JSON based work? specification for verifiable credentials that defines and describes the data they contain. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then you could move that over. Yeah. Is there anywhere yeah. that says uh, like what actually goes on the ledger or something like that? Because I think that this is the answer to that question. Um, I don't know if it's maybe in the somewhere else in this document. I have yeah, the, the whole thing. OK, yeah. cool. OK, we'll refine that. I'll make all of those bigger. And one of the points that uh, was made last meeting is that the revocation registry is optional. Yes. So I don't know if there's if we want to kind of indent that in here or if there's anything else that we want to highlight about this okay. visual. Right. Because maybe it would go next to the credential definition rather than before it. So, so in this indent revocation. What I would just do is reverse the order of the items and the icons okay. of these mm, items. Good the idea. Is, the did is most important, followed by the schema, then the credential definition, and then that deprioritizes the revocation registry to the bottom. Right. I'll fix those. If only later. it were that simple, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, slide 23 issuing and accepting a verifiable credential. Um, just uh, thinking out loud here, but that comment on the right says following the QR code or link will establish a connection. That seems kind of vague and um, I mean, I kind of, I guess, like I said, I'm thinking out loud. I, I think it's kind of an obvious statement. I don't know if there's a lot of value with how that's currently worded. Maybe it's but that the, the patient, you use patient in this language. So it's the patient um, registers or um, how would you say that when you like connect with the QR code because it's a QR or link follows it like, it's the patient follows let's just uh, maybe just look okay. ahead to the next slide so that okay. you can see or accesses the invitation or something oh good one I think the second bullet in the gray box needs mm -hmm. to be clarified. The patient holds their health data, meaning they have control over whom they share with whom they share it. It doesn't really there's the, that statement about consent is a little confusingly worded. I would get rid of yeah. the rest of that. Thank you. Okay, so um just knowing what comes, do you want to make? I, I see what I want to make sure is, is that somebody, the visual here is more important than the, yeah. you know, that they know, oh, I'm going to use a phone to scan this QR code. Maybe um, the patient. Um, oh, what's the Ex term? I like Helen's language. The patient accepts the invitation with their mobile device. Because you called it an invitation in the step immediately prior. Well, no, that's the, that's already happening here. 
Oh, well, mm, yeah, I guess no, that right. is that step. That's the point of that visual, right? Yeah. Patient connects to the system using a QR code. Or link. Mm, with their mobile device, it's a QR code. You couldn't email them something? They'd have to scan it? We just add the other th the. At the moment, if you're using a mobile device, there are no mobile wallet applications that I know of that can use the link to establish the connection. They're coming, but they can't yet. So you have to use a QR code. Should we put something that in the, uh, uh, um, should we say something to the effect of what you've just said is in development? No, I don't think we should no. put that in here. I What we could maybe do is just take or link out of that first word, the first text blob. So it just says a QR I... code, not or a link. Good, well. So accepting the invitation is connecting to the system. So we could we should keep one or the other, but it's kind of redundant at the moment. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah. You're very, you're very patient with all of us. Oh no 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 no! I mean, this is. Okay, that has to be changed. I don't really like, I'm not loving the design of this page, to be honest. It's a bit of a mess. Well, we'll let you work your magic. I think one question I have in that same gray box is, sorry, I haven't moved past that one yet, but uh, the first one, is it without needing to, or it's without writing any data about this credential? And it's, they do have to write data about the credential, but not the details. Needing to makes it sound like it's optional. Right. Without writing any data seems just fine. Okay. Is about the credential vague? Without uh, writing any health data about this credential to the ledger. How about without that? Writing, without writing any credential data. Excellent. Yeah, I think you can also take out the words and without from that sentence. And. Doing without, just the and. Yep. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. There are numbers in here, five and six. I know. Um, yeah, numbers. Haven't been, they'll be removed. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Like either we got a number them all or not number them all. Yep. Yep. I'll fix these. I think the rest of this is okay. Next is good. Uh, good luck with figuring out how to arrange the items. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a bit of a mess. Okay, presenting and verifying a credential. Um, the agent software generates a unique encrypted link for this interaction. Uh, can we say connection? connection? Yeah. Okay. 
this would be a point where you could mention con consent again, right? The patient chooses, <laughs> they chose to do this. So consent is implied. I don't, doesn't quite fit in nicely word wise, but that is where you could mention it again if you wanted to. One way to save some space if we want to is um, the wallets aren't doing um, biometric binding at the moment. Mm. I, I I just I I'm, my, I'm okay. So devil's advocate, you leave that out, people will immediately jump to what if what if somebody else takes my wallet, takes my phone. So even though, I mean, how long away is biometric binding? So the app is protected by your access to the device in general. There's not an additional layer that keeps you from accessing the application if you were to access the whole phone. And the timing for that is, uh, it's on the roadmap with an indeterminate point in the future. Nobody knows when it shows up on the roadmap exactly. Okay. Keila, what do you think? I think I think it's okay if I would I would be inclined to leave it. Maybe you say, I mean, it's more words, but you could put in it in parentheses and say, preferably through biometric binding. And <laughs> yeah, just leave it. I'd say um, maybe that might be kind of an important feature because if we're trying to, you know, uh, get people excited to, you know, use and adopt this technology, everything we can do to throw blankets of comfort and security on them will be a good thing. <laughs> unless we have, I agree with you, Steve, unless we have somewhere else to talk about this, because it doesn't have to be here, this is a procedural definition of how things are working it's like a it is a kind of random place to mention biometric binding that's not a bad idea to move it if there's another place for it maybe that's our compromise uh, that we take it out from this step and when we if we have somewhere else where we're talking about the app and the holder we can make reference to biometric binding yeah agreed so where do you want to do biometric binding it's a great question. Let me make okay. a note in our meeting notes so that we know to mention it. Not in the not on this slide is the answer, Trevor. Right. The I mean, well, we do talk here about, you know, unique encrypted connection. It, it does kind of fit here, maybe, in my opinion. And it might not hurt to have it in multiple places. I know it is kind of a, like a, a detail, but sometimes details matter, you know, I don't know. I would also say that this slide talks about everything after the download, the open, the, app, the setup, the wallet setup, the access, like all right. that. It's just how the credential works after, you know, so we can ex explain and expand on where you get your wallet and how you download it and how you set it up and what needs to be in there and what the standards are and how you then how you open it with your face and blah, blah, blah. But like, I think that's like the step before what this diagram is showing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think I personally vote to put it back in. Um, I, I see two reasons why not to, because maybe we could say it doesn't fit here and obviously the feature's not ready yet, but um, you know, if this slide is, how do you prevent, present and verify a credential? We're gonna wanna make sure people feel reassured that that's a secure process. 
Yeah, but we have we should mention it somewhere else. I think we table the subject. I've made a note. We should go back holistically through and talk about biometric binding in all of the places we should talk about it. And let's um so okay. so I've earmarked that. Maybe it gets back here, but let's table biometric binding for a minute and continue through the text review if that's okay. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more pages and we maybe have time to come back to this discussion. I think we can move on if there's no other comments on this slide at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just a page where they can go and watch a demonstration. Okay. Applications in healthcare. Now the question is, do how how more how expansive do we want to be on this? Um, I think we want tangible, relatable bullet points would be my yeah. recommendation. Can you fix you the know, second bullet point instead of sharing it, it to share it? I, I, um, I knew somebody once that said you should always boil things down to three bullet points. And if that's not enough, then do sub bullet points under the main three. I don't know if that's super doable here, but it might be worth a try and that helps Oops. people. Yeah, know. all of those enablings could be sub-bulleted under allowing patients to hold their health data. Those can all get indented because they're relating to that one above. Should that one at the top come down? I think maybe yes. Oh, you mean Andres is a bullet, yeah. I'm unclear. I'll let you finish. I'm unclear what the last bullet is trying to communicate. This one? Yeah. Well, doctor certification. So it'd be know, various health healthcare certification. provider certification and um Because this actually was one of the found the, the kind yeah, of the it would, and to verify it, credentials was in managing doctor approval uh, doctors qualifications. Yes. Maybe maybe we should it's simplifying healthcare provider certification and employment requirements. Is that too specific? No, it makes it a little more yeah. clear. Okay, and then you're taking off that first, first bullet. Yes, sorry. And what is an HCR on that? And Healthcare the record. Maybe, maybe I should oh, oh, okay. Definitely spell it out. Anything else on this page? Uh, just one more second. I'll slow it. Yeah, sure. Um, is the that bullet point 
So that that bullet point's actually two things. Is it? The, sorry, enable the first enabling. No, it's all good. Okay, okay. I was thinking that that one and the very last one were synonymous, but they're not really. So never mind. I have one recommendation in the blurb at the top. Mm -hmm. um, in doing this, they mitigate error, fraud, remove inefficiencies. Da, 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 all while do we want? Could we say all while enabling the patient to manage their data exchange or and integrations, something like that? So it's more on the positive side. Yeah, I think the point though of saying without direct integrations and saying like two or more offices or companies or providers or whatever, um, they don't have to do like some complex backend roadmap, you know, developing um, just to enable the sharing of data. So it's more about the, the sharing of data between two entities, not necessarily mm -hmm. the patient themselves. Um, because no like patient does that good integrations with the provider. It would be like provider to government or provider to whatever. Okay. I qualified that. I have another thought real quick about this bullet list. So there's basically three subjects here. There's the patient, the provider, and the um, like, I guess, healthcare organizations. And maybe we might want to reorganize the bullets to be under those, like, this is what we do for the patient, this is what we do for the provider, and this is what we do for healthcare organizations or whatever. I like that a lot. That's a great idea. So, I, um, yeah. So the main bullet would be for patients. Yeah. You could take that one and just Thank put that as a bullet under four patients. Really kind of um, and then the can we uh you, what you could do is get rid of enabling healthcare certification for school. No, we need that because that's related to the patient giving that authority. You could do it for patients, for providers and others, for others, you know. I, don't yeah, know. I was just trying, now we made it even longer bullet list, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So in front of the next primary bullet, it would be um, for providers. And that's just one? Uh, that's two. the sub bullet. And then, yeah, it would be both of those, I would say. And the first one that starts with the word enabling also would go under providers, right? Because it allows yeah, to manage. Them to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, uh, what 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 was that? Um, that one. Oh, the one you just had highlighted. The first one that starts with enabling can go underneath the provider section. This, yeah, that should come out of the patient part and go to the provider. And then the enable enabling mandated reporting for communicable diseases. Uh, yeah, Is that's that also patient. No. Or, yeah. Or is that patient? Enable, no. no, that would definitely be for providers. Yeah. How about enabling compliance with HIPAA privacy rule? Also probably for providers. Yeah, I agree. That one should be for providers too. And same with authenticating digital prescriptions would be the so both two of them. Both of those. Yep. Um, the, there is a benefit to the patient of making prescriptions a little simpler and easy, like easier for uh, them to. Agreed, but not authenticating. 
they don't care, the patient doesn't care about authenticating it. So you could add one to the top, uh, a, a fourth bullet for under patients. It says easier access to digital prescriptions or something like that. What do you think, Kayla? Um, yeah, maybe if we're sticking on the enabling yeah. thread here, it would be enable or your easier. Um, yeah. Access is fine. That's fine. It's actually a really good one. Um, is there one about, well, maybe it's allowing patient, uh, patients to hold their health data and provide consent, but like moving providers, like if you see a new, new or getting, you know, if you get a second opinion or something like that, like you have your data with you, you can just, it's like quicker, it's third, second opinions, or I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say, but um, just like, allowing the patient the problem set is the annoying having to um, fill out a bunch of paperwork every time every time you see a new provider and so this would facilitate easier access to new providers or something like that yeah i would say simplifies data uh, coordination across care teams Ooh, yeah that's it <laughs> And that is for the patient and the provider in theory, but. I think this is a pretty solid list. Mm -hmm. Is there a security aspect for providers like, you know, about, I don't know, securing against hacking or um, I don't know if there's like or zero trust something access to health data should we bring in zero trust here for potentially Trevor? I think that's overegging it a little. I don't think the provider per particularly cares about that. Like hospitals do, don't they? Like they care about getting hacked and stuff. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> we got we got a fair few bullets for them to consider. So none of this should have really changed, right? Um, it's, uh, it's. Um, I think there's been definitely rewritten, if I remember correctly. It's largely the same, but I think I've shortened it. I don't, nothing's standing out to me. I do have a second question I'm adding to my parking lot list, which is, do we define derived credentials, which we don't need to answer now, but we talk about it here and that has a really important play. So I just wanna make sure when we go back and do a final read through, We've got we have covered. not really dealt with derived credentials. Yeah, I think that when we putting on that security hat, we were talking about the biometric binding. I mean, derived credentials add a ton of value in the reducing the need to share private information to downstream participants. So we'll, let's table it, but for later. Any comments on slide 28 from anybody? Okay. Does this have the new, oh no, never mind. It wouldn't, well, would it, the newest video, Trevor, where Heather is um, prominently featured talking about the successful most recent trial? No, it doesn't. Is this slide missing a header or is this no, still all under the, continuation Aruba? of the previous? Okay, thanks. I, 
I can add that. Um, well, there's two video. The, there's well one video link in there. I don't know whether that goes to it or not. But the the most recent one with Heather though is more DTC focused than health focused. Yeah, that's that's kind of what occurred to me as well. I mean, that photo of the minister. Also, that. That's from, yeah. yeah I mean, I can take that out. Do you think the minister should come out? Well, it's kind of disingenuous because it, it applies to the DTC and not the Well, I mean, it does trial. end on, the, I do end on the uh, continue to collaborate in March, 2023. They successfully demonstrated blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah. So yeah. on the right for more details. So I can put the, I could put the video in there. That wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, there's a couple, there's two new videos actually. So it might, lay out nicely just tuck them okay. underneath those but yeah so i'll I'll send those links to you okay uh so just one thing to unless the, i'm just skipped ahead but um one of heather's comments was that we don't that i didn't put a roadmap what's the roadmap so read that with that in mind do we need a roadmap slide I find no. roadmaps interesting or think a lot of people do. Um, the hard part about it is, you know, it, we kind of have to think, do we want this document to be accurate for a specific snapshot in time and then become outdated as the, you know, roadmap changes and evolves and gets done, you know? So we can try and keep things that are, I don't know, just a thought we could try and you know, avoid talking about what features it currently has or will have. But I guess to some well, extent we have to do some of that. Well, I wonder if this this slide could be turned into a timeline and then we could say, you know, Cardia develop, you know, basically pull out all this information out in this big brick of text uh, in that kind of left-hand column, turn it into a timeline. And then at the end of the timeline have like, you know, future considerations include, and then we could like give bullet points of like items that we want to figure out, like biometric binding and that's, a, you know, link sharing or whatever, like all the other stuff that we're, you know, we have we have in mind and here's like the work ahead but we're not like super like tying ourselves to an exact time of when that's going to happen it's just the future i like that idea helen i would be very cautious of us pinning down anything too specific on this slide in a or in a roadmap because it's you know we're still working that out there's to your point some very clear things like we just mentioned biometric binding great example um, but I don't know that there, it would have to be really thoughtful about what goes on that timeline or roadmap. Yeah, just enough to get people excited that to see that there is momentum behind the project and that we are thinking about next steps and making it better and faster and make it jump higher and all those good things. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna have more in it in the future. Like you should be a part of this community because we're doing, real, you know, we have a lot of really cool goals ahead of us. Um, but yeah, not being super specific. Yeah, and I think showing the timeline of everything that we've done so far can show some of that without having to do too much into the like, what happens next? You know, it can be like dot, dot, dot. <laughs> So yeah, I didn't exactly. put the, the slide that's currently in the information that's currently in um, the white paper, which which focuses on, I think, drug testing. And um, uh, um, so I don't know, I, I, for whatever reason, I, I just didn't see that slide as being very compelling um, or out of date. Um, so maybe we want to look at that and extract what extract from that what needs to be kept yeah i think those those um expanded use cases would absolutely be something that would be on like towards the you know end of the dotted line on the timeline without specifics but again encouraging people to join and be a part of the, the growth of the project for sure
Okay, so next steps. Um, in the, this is something that we've been talking a lot about in the Aries marketing working group is how to get, how to lower the barrier of entry for people to get involved with the project, how to adopt it, how to participate and they, all the stuff. So I think, you know, want to use Cardia, how to get started could be its own page and then list all the things that you can like make it like this is its own page. Here's all the things you can do. Here's where to start. Here's what to ask questions. Um, here's when to show up. Here's our meeting timeline. Here's the links, like put every, like the whole kitchen sink in there. So there's no doubt in someone's mind that they are include, they are welcome to be a part of the community and use this, use this code base. I think that's a good idea. Helen, do you want to put that together? <laughs> No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send it. I'll I'll put it in the doc and send you send it to you, and you can um make the page and make it pretty. Um, but yeah, I'll put. I can I can do That'd that, and I'll great. send it to Keila as well. Keila and other folks to um get feedback to make sure that I'm correct in where people like go to download the code or whatever they need to do to adopt it. Um, but yeah, like putting putting the whole kitchen sink and how to use it that's like the whole point of the project right yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whole no, point of the paper <laughs> that's a, yeah that's an excellent point and i think it'll be a lot stronger for having that yep i'll get that going so we still have to we because i didn't dwell so deeply on the aruba um what happened in aruba as you know that that i you know, instead of it's it, it, because the focus of this version of the Cardia white paper is really the ecosystem that you can use for sharing data rather than here's what we did in Aruba. Um, uh, derivative, the, the, I, I, the, there's really no mention of derivative creden credential in this process. So how do we want to deal with that? Why, uh, in Keila, in, from, from a, a health data perspective, why is mentioning a, a derivative credential really important? Well, I think to piggyback on the idea that, um, you know, we're trying, there, there's a flavor of privacy and security that is like the undercurrent of why this is valuable. The concept of a derivative, derivative credential is you can share your health data only once and then it you just can say yes i'm good right so for example um you know if we're talking about youth sports and their health data they should be sharing their that they're eligible to play and all of their personal information with the club once it gets validated and then the coaches are not carrying around birth certificates and like medical records with them to tournaments, they can just carry around the stuff that says, look, they're totally eligible. They've met all their criteria. Everything's good to go. The club has all of that and validated it for like registration at competitive events or things, things like that. Right. So the fact that those derivative credentials protect the re, um, the redisclosure of their PH or PII, I think is valuable. Okay, I'll do a separate slide on that. Okay. Like enhancing privacy with a derivative credential could be the heading. Sure. I think it's really worth mentioning. It's, it's so valuable, that concept. Okay, and we had put a placeholder on the one other item, which was biometric binding, which we should just decide, do we need to like consistently mention it? Do we want to tackle that? And uh, is there a home for that somewhere else about the use of the holder app? Maybe we need a slide to talk about privacy security and looking ahead because we don't also we also don't mention for example like some of these apps maybe they're going to use the Karen Alliance you know there are players in our community that are trying to set some standards around how some of this stuff should function I don't know if we want to so if if we add in you say after issuing and accepting a um, let me think about where's the best place to put so 
after um, issuing, presenting and verifying a credential, we have a slide for uh, enhancing privacy with a derivative credential, um, enhancing security with biometrics is another slide. So they would follow each other. That sounds okay to me. Okay. Um, what do we want to say about biometrics? And that's a question for you, Keela, and I think Mike. I, I think, and Mike, correct me on any points here. To me, there's probably two points that I can think of off the top of my head. One is the biometric metric binding of the specific credential to me so that when the person receives it, they know it's specifically mine, whether that's through like pictures or whatever. And the second would be the protections on the holder app so that only the person who is authorized can do the sharing of the credentials, right? That goes to the consent um, on who should be allowed to share the information. So it's like locking down the app itself and then there's locking the credential to the person. Mike, did I miss anything or you wanna correct anything I said there? After you come off mute. <laughs> so, uh, no, that, I think that covers it. And yeah, the the way that's interesting because I don't know, like we don't have. Um, I don't think either of them are in the Cardia platform at the moment. Like correct, but we've yeah. talked about both of them because I believe um, Avatar was. I think it was Avatar who was doing something around the credential binding with biometric. So we discussed that in previous sharing sessions. Um, so that's definitely come up. I agree, they're both not available today. But again, it doesn't mean that it's not important to be talking about in the community. That's in sort true. of best practices. You could say, if you're careful with the language, you could say that um, the system, you know, is architected or built or structured in a way that could support or would support binding, but um, we have to say it's a feature that's not widely supported yet, something like that. Does that give you enough to work with, Trevor? Not a whole lot, but yeah, <laughs> I'll do something. It's going to be a, a very a lot of white space. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I, that's why I don't know if they may, maybe it is one slide, which is you know security and privacy best practice or yeah, yeah. features or best practices yeah. or something, and you put we put both of them on the same yeah. slide. That's totally feasible as well. They're not unrelated in that they're tied to tightening the system. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you're having a, if you're having a slide on security and privacy best practices, there are a bunch of other ones that could be pulled in to pad out the slide. That is true. Like Karen just, Alliance. You know. There's right. another one. Too. Um, if you want to do that, I, I'm volunteering you, Keila, to write that additional text. Okay, I can put some if, my if thoughts. Want. I can put th some thoughts into words and uh, send that your way. It's easier to words than something that exists. So we'll, I'm sure we'll want to review it again. <laughs> Go ahead, Helen. Oh, I was just going to say, you could also you know, put an eye-catching little diagram of like the icon for face scanning <laughs> or whatever. So people understand like it, this is about security. It's about, you know, biometric binding might not be a term that some readers understand um but if we show them like it's scanning your face or something you know i don't know like you could use a diagram to use up space as well i expect anybody who gets through this at this point to to this point will will be reasonably familiar with like uh, this this is this is a nerd a document for health info nerds Very true. 
Okay, so we have made it through our document. We have two things that we are going to take offline, biometric binding, derivative credentials, and potentially security. That's three things, I'm sorry. Um, Four things, time creation of timeline and roadmap. Timeline. Thank you. Roadmap. And I will try and circulate all of these well before next meeting so that there's plenty of time that they can be discussed before we get to the formal discussion on them. Okay, excellent. All right, wonderful. Well, we so we will do our best to move on these things uh, between meetings and hopefully we can just review the delta in our in a future discussion. Any other comments? Okay, well then, mission accomplished. We'll give everybody a couple of minutes between now and their next meeting. And we will talk to you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. all right, see ya. Bye.